thank you everybody. Thank you to the uh, scientific committee for uh, inviting me to, to make this presentation. Can I see my, my slides, please? No? I touched nothing. Perfect. Thank you. I need this, these notes. So, thank you, Alex, and all the scientific uh, committee. It's a great honor for me to be here, but it's also a little bit scary. It's the first time that I had to do a, 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 confer, a, a lecture in, in, in English, and also it's very scary to be between all those big fishes of, <laughs> of the fertility and, and breast ca and cancer uh, on the table. So, well, I had to speak about that. Alex is my friend, and I thought that she offered me a, a great opportunity. So, thank you. Uh, we are answer these major topics. So it is safe. And obviously, as, as uh, Alex told us, I'm talking about breast cancer. OK. So I don't have economically uh, conflict of interest on this topic. But breast cancer and pregnancy is my passion. Since I was a uh, trainee, I started uh, with uh, a question that uh, a patient uh, make me as she asked me about if uh, she, she was pregnant. I was uh, on my third year of tiny and she asked me, uh, I'm pregnant and my oncologist said me that I had to, to make an abortion. Do you, what, do you agree with the oncologist? I said, well, I'm, I'm just a, a third year trainee but I, I will do my best. I will uh, study that topic and I, I will answer you. And I studied the, the, the evidence on this moment, and on this moment was that there's no a bad influence, and that was my, my answering. So the patient decided to continue with their pregnancy, and after that, uh, Veronica was, was born it, and there's no problem at all. So that's my patient. My patients are my patient. Breast cancer, pregnancy, and all the related about that are my patients. So maybe there are some conflict of interest, but it's not economically. So Dr. Matthews has spoken before and has a very different presentation on dollars. But those are uh, Spanish uh, data. So in the 70s, the median age of mothers has grown from 24 to uh, uh, an older age at um, now it's on, I will remember, on the 30-something. And uh, there are, that, that, that means that there are more patients or more women that are exposed to the breast cancer risk. So even more important than that is that a lot of women delay the, the maternity after the 40-something. Matthew, Dr. Matthew told us that the, thank you to the, to the reproduction techniques development, this is possible, and after the 2000, uh, these uh, 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 women can be uh, pregnant. So the chance of having cancer before maternity, it's, it's increasing everywhere. And we are talking about breast cancer. Breast cancer is the most frequently diagnosed in women between 20 and 39 years old and older in developed countries except Australia, um, Canada, and South Korea, where the the, the thyroid cancer is more frequently. And uh, this is also the most frequently in developing uh, countries such as Spain. Uh, breast cancer treatment of young patients has her own peculiarities, her own peculiarities, by consequence, has her own specifications and guidelines. One of those is, is that we have to inform our young patients about fertility issues related to breast cancer treatment. So, Chemo has an impact on ovarian function. So we have to inform about that on, to our patients. This, I, uh, if they want to preserve fertility, we have to refer the patient to a, a, a fertility team. Uh, this, 
To be parent for me is one of the more important things in my life. Uh, for my, my patients also. It, it, it's, it's, it's one of the more imp, uh, important uh, things on, on, on this life. So it's very surprising that uh, when we are looking to the uh, petting related outcomes from the, the international consensus of uh, uh, outcomes measurements, they don't consider it. They don't consider the fertility issues. Probably because they are thinking about postmenopausal patients. But that's very surprising because for uh, young cancer survivors, this, when they are asked about their uh, parenthood, they say that even if they died young, it will still went to be a parent on 60% of, of, of their. So, it's really a major issue. And for when we consider the, uh, what uh, items are, are, are important on the quality of life perception of, of the cancer survivors, the, one of the most important is feeling healthy enough to be a parent. So it's, not, it's, it's a very important issue on, 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 on breast cancer survivors. And we are talking about <coughs> breast cancer. And majority of breast cancer are uh, receptor positive. And even when we are uh, with patients with ER negative hormones, uh, ER negative um, patient, uh, cancer, they, the hormones play some role on, on the pathogenesis. And none of us, we feel comfortable uh, giving hormonal contraceptives or uh, to a ER negative patients. According uh, to the provider's indication, in fact, uh, none of those uh, 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 hormonal contraceptives, even the intrauterine devices, none of those could be, uh, are contra or all of those are contraindicated in breast cancer survivors. So there's a ma major problem if you are from uh, a pregnancy where estrogen and estrogen levels rise up to 100 times to the normal ovarian cycle levels, even higher than and, the, and any ovarian stimulation. So, are we nuts in it? Are we are nuts doing that? Are we nuts allowing to get pregnant to a breast cancer patient? Pregnancy has a central role in breast development. During pregnancy, breast has a lot of changes and to allow their function. The only function that have breast is giving feeding to the mammal pups. So, during pregnancy, all the changes are on the direction of doing it. And even more important, when breastfeeding is ended, is ended, things must come back to normality. Um, pregnancy has an impact on the breast cancer. Everybody knows it. Even our patients. All of us has, uh, has listened to our patients saying that, I don't understand why I had cancer. I don't understand because I have a lot of children. I uh, breastfeed him, and I know that it's a protective effect, why I have cancer. Everybody knows it. In 1730, Bernardo Ramachini said that nuns developed breast cancer at a higher rate than married women. And, they, and he said that is, that was because he did not engage sexual intercourse, and that was unnatural. So now we know that probably it's not because of that reason, it's because uh, they don't get pregnant, probably because they are older than non, uh, knowns on, on, this, on, this, uh, uh, on this population. And we know now that uh, pregnancy has a protective effect, especially on ER positive and postmenopausal cancer. During cancer, I, sorry, during pregnancy, there's a lot of induced physical, physiological breast structural changes. The, the, uh, duct, uh, the DAX3, it's uh, a longing and ramification because the uh, uh, estrogen eff effect to uh, make possible the, the breastfeeding uh, after the deliver. But even more important than that is that in just one week, when breastfeeding is ended, there's a unique phenomenon of apoptosis and thousands of breast cells have a coordinated and programmed death and apoptosis and all those uh, detritus have to be removed from the breast. And 
recover the normal structure. Not, all, not only this has some changes on the structure of the ducts, there's also a, remo a stromal remodeling during pregnancy. During pregnancy, there are, there are angiogenesis, infiltration of immune, immune and inflammatory cells, fibroblast reorganization, and loss of lipid droplets with adipocytes. And post-laxin post embolition, that probably is very important also. There are apoptosis of epithelial cells, regression of expanded vasculature, degradation of extracellular matrix, and reference of lipid filled adipocytes. There is a key, uh, key uh, paper of macrophysics on, on it, and uh, also it's very important the lower extent of stromal profilation after pregnancy. There are also changes on the breast normal tissue stem cells. There is an increase on the number of stem cells during pregnancy and lactation, but after that, there is a decrease in the number of postlactational stem cells, and more important maybe than that, distinct stem cells are, not modif are, are modified differently during pregnancy. There are also changes on genomic signature. The genomic signature from before pregnancy and after pregnancy of the normal breast tissue is different, and it seems like all changes are on the way to control cell differentiation and breast cancer prevention by a cell stability and, uh, and making it more susceptibility uh, or decreasing the susceptibility to carcinogenesis. It's like if we saw the, the this paper for me is, is, is fantastic, it's a hand hand cell on 2000, the hallmarks of cancer. It's like during pregnancy, all the factors are influenced, and all the factors go in the direction to give a, a, a major stability, uh, to trans, uh, a, transcri a transcriptional stability, uh, uh, and all the changes are in the direction to decrease the breast cancer incidence. There's also some other changes on, on, on normal breast, breast tissue. One of my favorite is the, fe uh, the fetal micromerism. Micromerism is the presence of, uh, immune, uh, of fetal cells that have Im uh, important immune uh, activity, and they are present on maternal blood and healthy breast. They are not always present after a pregnancy, and where I, when we see th this, this, this phenomenon, we, they, they give a protection from breast cancer, and they, they have lower incidence of breast cancer. But more surprisingly that, than this presence of, of, the, of the fetal uh, immune, immune, immunocompetent cells is the fact that those cells are not homogeneous distributed in breast cancer patients. Patients who had breast cancer had, uh, had more fetal uh, immunocompetent cells are in the periphery uh, of, the, of the tumor uh, than in the, breast, in the normal breast tissue. So, how, this, how those, those cells are recruited, what's happening? I think that's one of the keys of, 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 the, of the pregnancy changes. So, that, that was happening on a normal uh, breast, but what's happening on the irradiated breast? We are talking about patients who had had an, a cancer. So, what's happening on, the, on this breast? On my experience, we have not enough information about that. There are not microscopically changes. The breastfeeding, in general, are only possible on the healthy breast. But more important than that, we have a lack of information about what's happened. So, is pregnancy safer after breast cancer? Are we nuts? We have not enough information, we have a lot of studies, but uh, there are studies on, on, that are retro retrospective. Obviously, there's no possibility to uh, make a prospective and randomized trial on it. So, we have to move with uh, the healthy mother bias. Are only getting pregnant those patients that are, have a better prognostic? In our series, we saw that uh, there we observe at least one, one, one important uh, 
possible bias that was tamoxifen. Five years of tamoxifen, it's obviously an important bias. Because obviously patients that, that, uh, it, uh, that are taking tamoxifen don't get pregnant, and all patients that uh, have a recurrence on the, on, the, on the first years don't get pregnant. So by fortune with Fredo and several other uh, colleagues, uh, the uh, leadership a uh, uh, very interesting study in uh, who this study tried to uh, to uh, don't uh, to uh, make up this 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 bias by making two cohorts one pregnant patients who have become uh, pregnant after breast cancer and very important that the non-pregnant cohort were patients who hadn't become pregnant uh, after breast cancer and have a less uh, 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 time without uh, disease uh, similar to pregnant women. So in this study, the results were very spectacular. We then saw uh, a worse prognostic on patients who had had a cancer, uh, who had pregnant after cancer. And we conclude that uh, this study indicates that pregnancy is not a protective against breast cancer recurrence. In women with a uh, history of endocrine sensitive breast cancer, less during the first years after pregnancy. However, that's important, the results are rated really reassuring, a lack of detrimental effect in, in, irrespective of the air status. Uh, this court has been uh, now with a longer. Uh, follow up and the results are similar and we conclude that updated results provide reassuring evidence on a long-term safety of pregnancy and breast cancer survivors including those with their ER positive cancer disease. So, uh, Dr. Pekatoris show us the results of, of this paper so I don't, I, I, I just noticed that importantly obviously patients on the ER uh, group are older and the median follow up uh, time from the diagnosis to the conception are, are higher. But there's a lack of detrimental effect on, uh, on pregnancy by art and the risk of recurrence to women uh, with history of breast cancer. But there's a very important topic on it that it's time tamoxifen for five years. That's a very important issue. If we take a look at the, recommend, at the guidelines from the ESMO, they say that all patients with uh, hormone receptive positive disease should receive adjuvant uh, endocrine therapy, tamoxifen, at least five years, and even 10 years in high risk patients. And by contrast, the pregnancy after breast cancer should not be discouraged, even in patients with uh, uh, hormone receptive positive disease. So it seems like it's a, a little bit uh, a conflict on it. So nowadays we are going, uh, we are on, on a study, the, the positive. The positive study pretends to assess the risk of breast cancer relapse associated with a temporary interruption of the uh, uh, tamoxifen treatment to, to permit a pregnancy. We make a window on the treatment to allow the, the, the pregnancy. That's an ongoing study. We don't have uh, the results, and, and we will have these results. On, uh, we need uh, at least uh, three, five, even more years. But I think that's a very interesting uh, study, and we have to, to wait for, for, for those results. So answering it to your question, is it safe to deliver after cancer? Yes, it is. And there's no evidence of difference of recurrence pattern in spontaneous versus ART pregnancy. So thank you very much for your attention.